Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. I'm going to talk about color correction today in this episode of the Adobe Camera Raw series. The main reason we adjust the white balance is to get the colors in your images as accurate as possible. So first of all, we see two values here in uh, just below white balance in the basic panel in the Adobe Camera Raw plugin. So we have temperature and we have tint. Let's see what happens if we change these two values. Even before we change them, we can see in which direction the colors will go. So the temperature change if I increase it to a more warmer uh, color value. So you can see that uh, orange or yellow here on the right. And we can see the cold blue on the left. So that makes sense. If I increase it, all the colors will get warmer. And if I move it to the left, then they will get colder and more blue the whole image. The tint value uh, will again use two main colors. It will get more magenta if I move it to the right and it will get more green if I move it to the left. Now, changing these values manually might be a little bit difficult, uh, I mean, to find the right color balance, but we have a lot of options here in the Camera Raw plugin that we can use to define the best uh, white balance. So first of all, I can double click on the temperature and the tint to set it back to its default values. That's a useful thing to know already. And thanks to a camera roll file, we have these numbers here, which the camera records for us. While if you use a JPEG file, you will see zero and zero on both of these values. So it's not as accurate as using a camera roll file. We also have the white balance selector here, which I'm going to talk about in more details uh, in this episode. But first of all, let's just see what happens if I try to do this manually. So adjusting the colors manually. So I can increase the temperature and I can see that everything turns more warm and uh, more yellowish. So that's already a useful uh, adjustment on this image. But uh, I should also consider using an adjustment just locally. So for example, in this case, if I would like to emphasize the nice and warm colors on this side of the castle, because of the sun is coming from that side, I can always use the adjustment brush. So instead of increasing the temperature, I can select the adjustment brush here from the tools and then increase the temperature only, not any of the other options. So I just set back everything to default values and just increase the temperature and then draw over that part of the building. And that will be a local adjustment on the white balance. So let's just see if I increase it a little bit even more. Then we can always easily adjust this later on. So I can locally adjust the white balance on the building. But of course, apart from this, we can always go back. If I click on uh, the hand tool, for example, then we will go back to the basic panel. And here we can adjust globally the white balance. So in this case, something like this would work, but obviously that's not enough. So white balance in itself is not enough to get the best results from our photographs. We also have to do some exposure changes. So in this case, I would probably reduce the highlights because it's a little bit overexposed, especially on the sky. So I would probably reduce the whites and the highlights, maybe even the exposure a little bit. So that's already much better, but still I would probably increase the clarity in the image just to let get a little bit more detail and maybe increase the shadows so we can see these ducks here in the foreground but again that's something that I might do with another adjustment brush so I would again select the adjustment brush tool and in this case instead of changing the temperature I am going to increase the shadows and just draw over these ducks here in the foreground maybe even a little bit more and maybe also the exposure on that area. So that's like a focal point of our image. So I would add a little bit more emphasis on that part. 
and of course the image has to be slightly rotated to the right as well so I'm going to use the straighten tool and I'm going to try to straighten uh, the whole image based on something that I can tell should be straight so maybe I can use this uh, column here or a tower sorry so let me just use again the straighten tool there's a straight line here like this one and based on that let's see uh, it's actually not really useful in this case let's just try using the bridge for straightening the image I'm still not happy with that so I'm going to use the uh, crop tool and uh, probably just rotate it around until I get the rotation or the crop right so that's I think it's a better straightened image now the whole uh, surface of the water looks more straight and always we can crop the image more if we don't want to use this part here on the right I just hold down shift and crop that part out of the image I want to make sure that the ducks are still visible here on the left so I'm going to keep the bridge somewhere on the third it's a little bit of composition as well and it's quite useful to uh, know I, I can see that there's still a little bit left of that branch on the right so I just get rid of that and there's still a couple of things I would use like the spot removal tool to click on this part here just to quickly get rid of that and that's probably the final uh, details I want to achieve on this image so I can click on done and now we can go back to bridge and uh, have a look at our final uh, details yeah it looks so much better than the original we can have a look at it again so color correction can be the first step of your whole uh, image editing in camera raw or it can be the last it doesn't matter when you do it but it's definitely one of the most important steps in the whole camera raw workflow now I already showed in the previous episode of this series this example but let me just show it again that whenever you have an image like this when the uh, white balance is way off and we can tell that immediately especially because ha we have a face in the photograph a portrait where it's very easy to tell that the colors are off our eyes are very um, sensitive to uh, skin tones and uh, eye colors and hair colors so these are the things from which we can easily tell if the colors are off on a photograph so in these cases it would be quite difficult to use the temperature slider and the tint slider to adjust the image so instead of that I would use the white balance tool the white balance tool will pick up uh, the colors on an area wherever we click and based on that it will try to adjust the colors so for example if I click on the hair it won't do a great uh, result or also if I click on the uh, clothes it's not the perfect uh, but if I click on a neutral close to 50% gray area like the door here in the background then we will get a great result we can try also to click on the white part of the eyes but because that's a little bit too dark again we won't get the best result so by clicking on the door here in the background we will get probably the best result possible so that's a really nice skin tone we can see already on the image so let me just click on done and go back to bridge once again and I would like to show you another scenario when we have a color chart, a color checker chart in the scene. This is great whenever you want to take pictures in a studio or in difficult lighting conditions because in these cases you can use these color checker charts to just take a test photo and then take out the chart from the uh, scene and take more photos but once you uh, have this test photo you can just make the color correction based on this image and then synchronize it or apply it to all the other photos in the whole uh, session so in most shooting environments once you have found the right white balance all the other colors will tend to fit into place you can help get the white balance right in camera by choosing a fixed or auto setting or you can use these color checker charts as a first step that will help you to make a more accurate and measured reading 
A camera auto white balance setting may do a good job, but it really depends on the camera you are using because even the best cameras won't know how to handle every lighting situation. So in these cases, I would again use the white balance tool and probably click on this uh, uh, color here. Uh, I always keep an eye on the RGB while using this case and try to find something which is close to 120, 125. That's like a 50% uh, value, light value. So if I click on this, then uh, based on that value, it will try to set all the three readings, the R, G and B, the exactly the same. So now they look very close to each other. We can see here, for example, they are all 117. So let's uh, have a look at before and after. That was before and that is after. So it's a very slight change in this case. It's not as strong as on the previous portrait, but we can still see a difference. And that difference might be very important if you take pictures of objects. So whenever you have something like a logo or a packaging of a product, which has to be exactly the same colors as it is printed, then it's very important to, to use a color checker chart like this. So that's also something that's useful to keep in mind. And last but not least, I would like to show you the presets, the white balance presets we have here. First of all, we have the S-Shot, which is obviously the uh, values that we used uh, when we took the picture with the camera. Then we have Auto, and this is where the camera makes the best guess on a shot. You will find it works in many situations, uh, but it's worth venturing out uh, for trickier lighting conditions uh, to use uh, other presets. Tungsten is another one. Now, this, is, uh, this mode is usually symbolized with a light bulb, and this is for shooting indoors, especially under incandescent lighting, such as bulb lighting. It generally cools down the colors in the photos. So these are the options that you can actually choose from your camera and uh, take a picture with these settings. But if you use a camera raw format, then these are the options that you can always change later on. So it's not a problem if you chose, let's say, tungsten in this case, because you can always change it, for example, to daylight, and then you will get a much better color uh, correction or color balance in your image. And that's all what you need to know about setting the white balance and doing color correction on your images. I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. And if you want to learn more about the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, make sure you join me next time as well. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.